back to the Holtz Mitchell channel and this episode of Random Links. You know, a lot of you that uh, work with wood have often probably wondered why it appears that uh, the growth rings in the trees get smaller as the tree gets older. And um, it's a real simple explanation for it. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, this series is designed to kind of take the science and make it a little more manageable so that, uh, you know, the average Joe can understand where things are going with it. So that's kind of where I'm going with this. Um, we all know that uh, trees are plants, you know, and they conduct photosynthesis in order to grow. And um, today we're going to be looking at a few, uh, mostly uh, spruce trees, uh, some dug fir, uh, conifers lend themselves to this uh, a little better because of the way they're uh, the, uh, their shape so it becomes a little clearer to the average Joe as to why these trees you know why trees have these types of growth patterns and why the wood has the type of growth patterns. now you know as a tree grows it, it develops a certain amount of leaf area and of course in the leaves is where photosynthesis takes place and um, the uh, product that these leaves make is, of course, sugar, uh, which goes back down to the cambium in forms of uh, in form of photosynthate, where it then becomes uh, recombined and is put into building blocks such as lignin, cellulose, and hemicellulose, and then from that process, then also a wee bit of methane uh, is released. So. Um, that's just kind of the science in a nutshell. Now, as a crown develops in a tree, some trees develop exponential, or some crowns develop fully to where there's, uh, you know, um, good healthy limbs from the ground all the way to the top of the tree, you know, if the tree is out by itself. And, you know, we call those woofy trees or wolf trees um, in the logger jargon because they're just so woofy. Just woof. and um, but you know, joking aside, um, they usually don't attain very uh, much height because of lack of competition. But they're incredibly large at the base and then taper off relatively quickly. Um, of course, you see that also in uh, high elevation trees or uh, trees where there's uh, not much water. We saw that a lot like in Carson City, excuse me here, I've been tramping around the woods here, and got a beard full of condensate. So, so when a tree has developed its, its um, final crown size, shall we say, um, if it's in a stand with other trees in competition with uh, others for light, water, and, uh, and nutrients. So I'm gonna pick on these dug firs here for a minute because these uh, crowns are uh, kind of arch typical of what I'm talking about. As you notice, you know, the, the bowl of the tree comes up, there's hardly any limbs on it, and then all of a sudden you're coming into the crown. Now, the crown, um, of course, produces the photosynthate. You have to have uh, three things for that, light, water, and nutrients. And so, of course, air. But um, anyway, when the tree fully develops its crown, as you notice, you, you can see how the crown kind of moves up with year to year, um, where the, uh, the leader of the tree at the very top uh, advances, and then the bottom branches kind of advance and you know die off and fall off as, as the crown moves up. And so this is a fully developed crown, and the crown can only produce a certain amount of photosynthate in order to uh, construct various parts of the tree and so this is kind of a, um, a, a real good example of uh, you know a full crown development now it can only develop you know a certain uh, square footage of, of uh, leaf area on it uh, in the crown and that square footage then of course dictates how much photosynthate can be produced now as the tree grows you have a certain amount of photosynthate, say, um, let's grab a, a, a number out of the air right here, and uh, we'll have, say, five square meters 
of leaf area on a tree throughout its life. And as that tree grows, the crown moves up with the stand uh, and the other surrounding trees do as well. And their uh, crown area doesn't increase. It might increase marginally, but it usually stays roughly the same throughout the life of the tree once it's fully developed. And then um, it will say that five square meters of, of uh, leaf area will generate, um, let's say, half a cubic meter of photosynthate that's spread out over the entire tree uh, throughout the year. So now you've got, you know, imagine if you will, you know, like behind me here, these trees, they're, you know, a certain size, and every year there's a half a cubic meter of wood being added to it. So you're going to have that wood being spread out over larger and larger and larger area because the tree not only grows in girth, but it also grows in height. So it has to uh, have that material going up and out. And so as the tree grows or ages, the, year, the growth rings appear to be going, getting smaller. I mean, they are getting smaller in, you know, in, in um, diameter uh, on the, uh, or I should say the radius of them is getting smaller but the tree is still producing the same amount of photosynthate. And so it's just being spread out over a larger, an increasingly larger area per year. And that's why this has the appearance that it slows down. There are trees that experience exponential growth, and I'll show you that here uh, on a, on a uh, nice silver fir because it kind of lends itself, uh, conifers lend themselves better to this phenomenon, it, trying to explain the, you know, the whole growth ring uh, dynamic. So here's another nice little example of, uh, now these are suppressed trees here, but these crowns are fully developed for their size, um, unless these trees were uh, to be liberated where the surrounding stand were to be cut away these guys will never uh, have any more leaf area than what they have right now they'll continue to grow and they'll eventually break through and, and get to the top of the canopy but it will take many many years and the growth rings in these guys are going to be extremely fine throughout the whole life of the tree um, they'll never have what's called exponential growth and lay on fat so to speak in, in big numbers or in, you know, in big volume of, of, of wood. Here's an even better specimen uh, that highlights the uh, development of a crown, the bowl, the leader, and the branches, of course. You know, as you look up and down this guy, he's about 12 feet tall. When you look down here at the base, as the uh, crown moves up, you know, the leader up here uh, keeps on shooting up, and then in you know certain intervals the limbs start to fall off and die off and then fall off as the crown moves up to the canopy so here's the uh, silver fir i was telling you about that's experiencing exponential growth and as you can see you know from all the way from the bottom clear to the top we have healthy full limbs with lots of leaf area that are producing incredible amounts of photosynthate. And down here at the base, let me zoom you in here a little bit. This guy is still really growing like crazy. This is not typical. Uh, this tree is, of course, you know, out by, his, by himself. And same thing with this red cedar here. He's experiencing uh, exponential growth. Can't get a good look at the base because the limbs go clear to the ground on this guy. But uh, in 10 years time, he'll be looking about the same. So he's about uh, oh, almost three feet in diameter down at the base. Uh, this tree isn't very old, probably less than 50 years. But as you can see, he's growing like a weed. hope that uh, kind of explains things a little bit. I hope the uh, pictures of the crowns kind of lend a little bit better understanding of uh, how this works. And uh, if there's any 
additional comments or contributions you'd like to make to the discussion, by all means, leave a comment in the comment section below. I always love to hear from folks. And uh, stay tuned for more of these kind of uh, little episodes. There's going to be lots of different other subjects coming up. So stay tuned.